Hello and welcome to another episode where we attempt to fall asleep but we succeed because we have the help of Habibi Spice who is me. Today I'm recording this on Thanksgiving which is a very controversial holiday here in the United States. But aside from the holiday, that does not mean we shouldn't be thankful. Because we have a lot of privilege. If you are watching this, you have privilege. To some extent. So good job. Recognize privilege. Okay? Now make sure you are ready to go to sleep. If you are not ready to go to sleep, I will make you ready. Just hold on. Okay? I'm going to make you ready. And we are going to be reading the Khalil Gibran, the Prophet, reading more from the book. We already did one episode. Go, go watch it because we talk about love and uh, a lot of message came from that I will not spoil it of course anyway today as we read the prophet me myself I want to profit profit so I want you to check out the merch merchandise store because now is the perfect time to buy a gift for someone you like or maybe love Okay, you can get Yahmar shirt, you can get Habibi Spice shirt, you can get mug if they drink, drink tea, drink coffee, drink water, mug say Yahmar, beautiful, beautiful gift. So go. But now we will begin reading. So if you want to buy something, pause. Pause it, because you will fall asleep mid-transaction. Habibi, this is not good business practice. I don't want to put you to sleep while you send me money. So pause, send me money, and then play the video, okay? The second part of this book is about marriage. The first one was on love, now is on marriage. I would love to see what he say about marriage. Then Almitra spoke again and said, And what of marriage, master? And he answered, saying, You were born together, and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days. I you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness and let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. That's pretty. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone. Even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver, with the same music. Crazy. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping. For only the hand of life can contain your hearts and stand together, yet not too near together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow.
So in order to have a very fortified bond, a very strong love and marriage, we need to appreciate the proximity, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we honor the distances. So strong for the pillars of the temple stand apart. Do you see pillars like this next to each other? No. The only way to hold the temple up and high and strong, to stand the test of time, to stand the winds and the hurricanes maybe, if the temple is in a hurricane prone area. The pillars need to be wide apart. That is how you create a good base. Same thing with marriage. Too much proximity is good, but you need to sprinkle in the wind in between. Because individuality, a strong individuality, would solidify a stronger duality. Right? Maybe Khalil should add this one in the book. Let me see how it goes. For the pillars of the temple stand apart. A strong individuality create a stronger duality. Maybe in the next print they will make a correction. And a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. So now we are moving away from the marriage and we are going into children. It is very chronological. We start with love, marriage, children. This is very reminiscent of the song. I'm sure you've heard of it. You say to people, you're like Larry and Rudy sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First come love, then come marriage, then, I don't know the lyric, I have to look them up, but then come children. So he said, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself, of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. It's like the stock market. You buy a stock. The stock, the share is for you, but the company is not for you. Maybe you can buy all the shares and get the company. But that is expensive. And I don't think you can find all the shares for a child. Maybe. And though they are, you may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. Habibi, yes, they do, but I have to influence the thoughts. I have to teach them how. I have to teach them how to think. I cannot just give them love and they will be like, okay, it's a theory of relativity. No. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. Okay, I agree with this one. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. If I'm still alive, Habibi, I will see them. You know? They will go buy a house tomorrow or next week or next month or they they turn 35. If I have a child at 35 and they turn 35, I will be 70. So you're telling me I'm going to be dead at 70? Not nice of you, Khalil. You may strive to be like them but seek not to make them like you. Habibi, why would I want to be like a child? Or maybe he is talking about the childlike wonder. 
because people have children so that they can see the world from their eyes again. They can seek the pleasure of rediscovery. They can seek the joy in experiencing things for the first time as their children experience these things that we once experience. Maybe. For life goes not backward nor Terry's was yesterday. You are the bows from which your children are living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and fat, far not fat, far make way more sense than fat. You have to feed the arrow a lot to make it fat in that short in that short period of time it is flying. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. For even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. So we are supposed to for even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves the bow that is stable. It is our duty to propel these children into life. The arrow is going to fly, but the arrow will not fly without the bow. An arrow without the bow, you have to throw it with your hand. I'm not sure how strong your hand is. I'm strong, but if you give me an arrow and I have to throw it, it will not be very strong. It will not breach a person's chest. Like in Game of Thrones. Have you seen Game of Thrones? What a horrible ending. Season 1 to 4. Very good. Five, maybe. We don't talk about Game of Thrones, it's okay. So the children are arrows. Now giving birth to an arrow? That is painful. But that is the beauty of life. Then, said a rich man, Speak to us of giving. So now we are into giving. And he answered. It's interesting because the rich man is asking about giving. He want to make sure. Like, do I have to give? I have a lot. Is it okay if I don't give? Maybe he meet uh, Elon Musk here or Bill Gates. I think Bill Gates does give more than Elon, that's for sure. You give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. Should I give him my arm, Yanni? Here you go, Habibi. Here is my arm. Tomorrow I give you my left leg. For what are your possessions? but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow. And tomorrow, what shall tomorrow bring to the overprudent dog burying bones in the trackless sand as he follows the pilgrims to the holy city? And what is fear of need but need itself? Is not dread of thirst when your well is full, the thirst that is unquenchable. So if my well is full, my friend well is empty, he is scared of not being able to quench his thirst. I tell him, come here. 
why don't you stick your hand into my well and pick yourself up some water for you now the problem here my friend will most likely respond like this I appreciate you reaching out and offering your full well to me however I do not have a receptacle or container in which I can collect the water in your well my response to that will be Habibi did you visit the merch store there is not only one mug but two mug you can get and those will make you carry all the water you can eight ounce or whatever the mug is my friend will be like what's your wi-fi password i don't have reception here and then he will get the mug there are those who give little of the much which they have and they give it for recognition and their hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome and there are those who have little and give it all these are the believers in life and the bounty of life and their coffer is never empty there are those who give with joy and that joy is their reward and there are those who give with pain and that pain is their baptism and there are those who give and know not pain in giving nor do they seek joy nor give with mindfulness of virtue they give as in yonder valley the myrtle breezes its fragrance into space through the hands of such as these god speaks and from their eyes he smiles upon the earth it is well to give when asked but it is better to give unasked through understanding and to the open-handed the search for one who shall receive is joy greater than giving and is there aught you would withhold all you shall have all you have shall someday be given therefore give now that the reason of giving may be yours and not your inheritors you know when i work at pizza i work at pizza shop here when i first move i work for a minimum wage we have a small tip jar in the front where people you pay you put tip inside however the step jar was shared among us for three to five people would be working the tip jar would have twenty dollar thirty dollar fifty dollar per day which is at most ten dollars each so the neighborhood is not a poor neighborhood it's a family neighborhood people would get orders big three four pizza expensive pizza seventy dollar per order eighty dollar per order 120 per order but it was not uncommon for these people to not tip not one dollar not two dollar they spend 80 dollar on pizza but leave zero tip which tipping culture here you you can survive on tips one day we are getting these orders bigger ones and these people come in pay 60 70 80 dollar per order and not tip but then two people walk in 
a girl and a man. They were what appears to be homeless. They had run down clothes. They were dirty. And they did not buy pizza. By, by pie, they bought it by slice. We have slices ready. So the girl asked me, can I have two slices? Which would be around six dollars. I said yes. So I got the slices. And she was scrambling in her bag, trying to get me dollar bills and coins. Very, very wrinkled dollar bills, taking them out, straightening them out, trying to count out six dollars for me. And I told her, don't worry about it. And I told the cook to put more slice, one or two more slice. So she said, thank you. And she started giving me more. In the tip jar, she started tipping. I was doing her a favor because I assumed he would need these dollars. But she appreciated the favor so much, she got rid of them anyway. And that is all she had. Even the coins, she was putting them in. That is giving, according to Khalil Gibran. You often say, I would give, but only to the... I would give but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchard say not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. Surely he who is worthy to receive his days and his nights is worthy of all else from you. And he who has deserved to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. And what desert greater shall there be than that which lies in the courage and the confidence, nay, the charity of receiving? And who are you that men should rend their bosom and unveil their pride, that you may see their worth naked and their pride unbashed? See first that you, yourself, deserve to be a giver and an instrument of giving. For in truth, it is life that gives unto life, while you, who deem yourself a giver, are but a witness. And you receivers, and you are all receivers, Assume no weight of gratitude, lest you lay a yoke upon yourself and upon him who gives. Rather rise together with the giver on his gifts as on wings. For to be over mindful of your debt is to doubt his generosity who has the free-hearted earth for mother and God for father. Beautiful. We learn that to be happy in marriage, you have to be separated, like the pillars. We learn that children are a pain because they are arrows. So we need to get rid of them. We need to send them out. I'm joking. We need to propel them. We need to propel them into life. The arrows in your backpack are there to be shot out. They are not to be kept in the backpack for they do not serve a purpose in your backpack. And at some point they will probably be poking the side of the backpack, rendering the backpack not very good. So instead of replacing the backpack, propel your arrows. 
okay? And be charitable. Give. Give of yourself. Which means emotional need. Which means support content creator like me. Right? Anyway. I will let you go back to sleep. If you were asleep. If not. It's time to go to sleep. I will see you next time. Good night.